For this video, what I want to do is talk to you about the parent function of cosecant, how to graph it, and some of the attributes about the graph. So first of all, the parent function for cosecant is the function f of x equals cosecant of x. You could also have it written as y equals the cosecant of x. Both are acceptable. Um, recall that cosecant and sine are reciprocal functions, so my advice to you when you are graphing um, secant or cosecant is to start with the reciprocal function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with graphing f of x equals sine of x. Just to give me a starting point, um, it's a lot easier to graph a sine, and this will just kind of help us to see what is going on with our cosecant. Okay. Um, so a couple things about the graph. Remember that our x coordinate is the angle of rotation. In this case, I have the angles of rotation as radians, but you could also have this posted out as degrees. So I have it starting at 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Um, you could have also just labeled it as 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. So make sure you know whether you're working in degrees or radians. Basically what happens with our sine graph is that we are going to start at our starting point on the unit circle, which is zero um, degrees, or in this case, zero radians. We're not rotating any. So that's going to be our starting point. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our sine coordinate at that point. So at the point of zero, when I've started, my sine is at zero. It hasn't um, moved at all. Remember that it's cosine comma sine, so it's starting on the x-axis. All right, and then what happens when I go to pi over 2? Pi over 2 does go to 1, and if you notice, I do have this as 0.51, 1.52, just to kind of give it a little more amplitude so you can see the curve a little bit better. Um, you don't have to label it that way. You can label it as 1, 2, 3. I just had a little extra space, so that's why I did that. All right, and then it would go back to 0 at pi, negative 1, back to 0, positive 1. And if we go the other direction, it does the same thing, um, except for it would go to negative 1 first, then to 0, positive 1, and back to negative 1. Sorry, I skipped one. Let me do 0 first, and then to negative 1. So what we have here is a couple of periods of the sine curve. Remember that the sine curve just repeats over and over again. Okay, um, so if I would have continued over here, it would come back down again. So this would just keep following the same curved pattern over and over again. All right, so one thing that I want to talk about here is that because of the fact that sine equals zero at these points right here, we do end up with vertical asymptotes. at x equals n times pi, where n just represents any integer. So for example, if n were 0, 0 times pi is 0, that means that we have a vertical asymptote at 0. If n were 1, then we would have a vertical asymptote at pi. We would have a vertical asymptote at 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, etc. Okay. Um, we could also go in the negative direction. So negative pi, negative 2 pi. This one's a little bit easier to see than the secant functions um, equation of the vertical asymptotes. A little less complicated. Okay, so what we do next is we actually graph the cosecant graph. So I started with sine because sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. Okay, um, so what's going to happen here is I'm going to, this is basically the vertex of my graph, and this blue graph is going to be my cosecant graph. So what's going to happen is I essentially have a parabola. All of these points invert over this maximum point right here of my sine graph. Okay, um, 
What happens here is the same thing, except for it's going to go downward, so it's a downward parabola. If I had this filled in, it would do the same thing here, where it would get closer and closer to the next one. I just didn't draw it in there. Um, it is a repeating pattern, so it does continue to do the same thing over and over again, which does make it a little bit easier. All right, so some attributes that we want to talk about. We definitely want to talk about the domain and the range. Um, this is not a continuous function because it is discontinuous at the points of pi. So there are breaks in the graph. Anytime you have a break in the graph and it's not a smooth um, function, it is discontinuous. So the blue graph, like I said, is the actual graph of the cosecant. We just used the sine curve to help us to find where our um, graphs are going to be. So our domain is our x values, and our x values are going to be easier to write in set notation. x can be anything except for um, intervals of pi. So remember that we would just use our vertical asymptote. x can be anything except for n times pi, where n is an integer. Okay, and our range, remember this is our y coordinates. So remember that we're just looking at the blue. So the blue is everything from negative infinity to negative one, and from positive, in, or from positive one to positive infinity. So you can either write it in interval notation, so we would say negative infinity to negative one inclusive, or you can go from one to positive infinity. Or if you prefer set notation, you could say that the range is all y values such that y is less than or equal to negative 1, or y is greater than or equal to positive 1. So whichever notation is a little bit easier for you to understand. All right, so the last thing that I want to do is I want to just talk to you about um, some important things. Um, remember, we did already talk about the fact that we do have vertical asymptotes at x equals n pi. Okay, um, this is a discontinuous function. For this one, there are no x-intercepts. Okay, the um, Cosecant curve, the parent function will never cross the x-axis. There is also no y-intercepts on this one either because of the fact that, um, I'll just say x or y-intercepts, because it's undefined at that point. Okay, um, the period, remember the period is how often it repeats, is going to be 2 pi. There is no amplitude since there is no maximum or no minimum. Okay, and for this one, this one is going to be symmetric. with respect to the origin, which makes it an odd function. So just in case you need to know those things, it's important to go into a little more detail. So just to recall what you should do with um, cosecant is first start by graphing the sine graph and then just invert all of your max and your minimum points um, and that will give you the graph of cosecant. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.